Kim Olufemi Ibadia Biamila. God bless you all. So far, uh, 2021, 4.9 trillion is assumed to have been expended on that institution. Lawmakers decried the absence of critical stakeholders during investigative hearing, threatened to apply sanctions. The same attempt was made to sell this power plant and the investigation conducted. And the plan to privatize Niger Delta Power Holding Company comes under consideration at the House with members turning down the idea. It's time again for another edition of House Tickets, a weekly program that documents the workings of the House of Representatives of the legislative arm of government. The Special Ad Hoc Committee on the House on Petroleum Subsidy Regime resumes sitting with lawmakers, expressing disappointment over the absence of critical stakeholders. This is even as more facts emerge on the volume of petroleum imported into Nigeria between 2015 and 2022. Details in the course of the program. On motions, terrorism and banditry, as well as flood disasters, occupy the attention of lawmakers as they seek lasting solutions to the recurrent problems. All of these are more in our lineup as House Ticket resumes after this timeout. Please stay tuned. The entire purpose of the legislative agenda is to direct our legislative resources and efforts in a coordinated effort to ensure the well-being of the individual in a life of safety and freedom. That is a high ambition, but it's well worth the effort. We have passed landmark legislation to fix our oil and gas industry, reform the police, and reorganize the corporate administration system in our country. We have considered and passed meaningful legislation that impacts all areas of our national life. On Tuesday, 19th July 2022, when the House resumed from cell lab break, plenary did not hold as the House lost two of its members in the persons of Representative Jude Ise Idehe of Edo State, representing Ego Ikbogba Oka Federal Constituency, and former member Representative Jibrin Satumari of Borno State, who represented Askira Uba and Hawul Federal Constituency. Plenary was adjourned after a minute's silence was observed in respect of the late lawmakers. It's the perfect piece. However, on Wednesday, 20 July 2022, several motions and bills were considered. The sitting was presided by the Deputy Speaker, Representative Ahmed Idris Wase. For highlights of proceedings, let's take our next report as compiled and presented from our studio. Several bills, matters of urgent public importance and motions came up for consideration on Wednesday the 20th of July 2022. Representative Remande Shaulu moved a motion on the urgent need to prevent terrorists from overrunning communities in Taraba State. You go to Sa local government, there are about 10 villages and settlements that the same thing have happened and the same thing in Yangtu development area. The House further notes that in the latest attacks, the terrorists were led innocent and defenseless people and, and they moved freely from Takum to Osa shooting at uh, motorists and pedestrians. The House also notes that the killings and destructions have become daily occurrences and in several of the communities that terrorists attack, crops in the field are, are dist crops in the field Houses, including places of worship, are sometimes set ablaze. His prayers were the house to urge the military to deploy more personnel to the area to restore normalcy. Further called on other intelligence agencies to collect the intelligence mechanism for stemming the tide of violence in the region. Call on the National Emergency Management Agency to come to the aid of those stranded in the forest and provide them with relief materials and temporary safe abodes to dwell in. Those the motion was voted on and adopted.
on a matter of urgent public importance regarding... Representative Khadija Booker also moved a motion on the urgent need to address the effects of the gruesome flood disasters in some communities in Yobe State. On Sunday, 17th July 2022, there was a heavy downpour which led to excessive flooding in Gulani and Gujiba local government areas of Yobe State. Concerned that the heavy rains resulted in unprecedented flooding, which led to the partial submerging of some houses and farmlands and caused extensive damage to properties worth millions of naira in different parts of the local government. One of the communities most affected by the rainfall is Bumsa, an ancient community in the Gulani local government area of the state, where about 85 houses were being affected by the floods. Others include Kukua town, where, where over 30 houses and shops were affected. And in the northern part of Gula Rafa, about 50 houses were also affected. In the northern part of Guru, 20 houses were submerged. Bulunkutu community was completely washed away by the floods. In Duyu, Kotom, Duchi, and Kojale, dozens of houses also collapsed. Representative Khadija further stated that the recent rainfalls have completely eroded the flooded houses and communities in parts of Yobe State, and the residents are in their need of federal intervention. The motion called on the National Emergency Management Agency, Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Social Development, as well as other relevant agencies to ensure that the affected communities receive the necessary aid. The prayer was adopted. Against any, there is a bit. In another motion, Representative Magajida Uadliu alerted the House on the need to halt the privatization process of five power plants under the Niger Delta Power Holding Company. The same attempt was made to sell these power plants. And in the investigation conducted during the 2021 it resolved that these power plants are not to be sold. Further, further recall the attention of the Board of Directors at its 46th meeting on 23rd April 23rd to draw the approval of NCC that 21st April 2021 to proceed with sales of the five power plants was discussed. The federal government budget to, to pull the federal government budget deficit given the negative impact of COVID on the nation's economy, although the asset under concern do not belong, the asset do not belong exclusively to the federal government, but to the three tiers of government. Whether that the federal government insists to proceed with the sale of this asset, despite the fact that the consent of the other shareholders, state and local government, the appropriate legal framework and policy to apply relating to the procedure of, of the disposal of this asset asset by the federal government and agency given the joint shareholding of the state and local government have not been resolved. Lawmakers contributed to the motion even as amendments were proposed. This is a company that is, uh, has a shareholding. If federal government wants to do anything with its assets, that is fine, but they should do it with regard to their own shareholding. They should, if they want to dispense of the assets, they should dispense with it and let the co-shareholders have the right of first refusal so that they can fund whatever they want to do. The House, in its resolution on the motion, called for proper auditing of the NDHC as this sale will jeopardize the interests of the shareholders. Further called on the Bureau of Public Enterprises to desist from the intended sale of the five power plants and ensure compliance. From the other paper came a motion on the need to address the short change against Bayelsa State in the skilled recruitment by the Transmission Company of Nigeria and other ministries, departments and agencies of the federal government. It stood in the name of Representative Prayer Oseke. Only a few of such successful applicants are from Bayelsa State, despite the many eligible qualified applicants from the said state. Further notes that Considering the youth's restiveness on account of mass unemployment, this act of bias and uneven distribution of opportunities could negatively impact on the ethical conduct perpetrated by youths of the state. We need the support of this house to help us in a time of predicament. And Mr. Speaker, we don't have any other place to go 
Yes, you asked some questions. We have done our best to see how we can interact with the Commission to see how they can salvage our situation. Unfortunately, we are not having the headway. The motion was adopted by the House. I rise this afternoon. Still from the other paper, a motion on a call on the federal government to address the devastating flood disaster in Darazo town of Darazo, Ganjua Federal Constituency of Bauchi State, moved by Representative Mansur Manusoro. In Darazo local government area of Bauchi State, which destroyed more than 200 houses, sources of livelihood and farmlands. The House is aware of the ongoing good erosion control and road improvement works being implemented by the Ecological Fund Office of the Federation towards addressing the recurring flood incidences in Darazo Town. The House is concerned about the plight of thousands of Nigerians in Darazo Town displaced by the flood disaster. Representative Benjamin Kalu proposed an amendment to the prayers of the motion. Several resolutions were taken on the matter, amongst which is to urge the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, to provide support to the victims of the flood disaster. Also urge the Ecological Fund Office to review their impact assessment report on Darazo Town erosion and road improvement works to address the causes of the devastating flood incidents. I rise to move the motion. Representative Sade Soli Jibia and five other lawmakers jointly sponsored a motion on the need to investigate the structure and accountability of the joint venture businesses and production sharing contracts of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation from 1990 till date. Representative Sade Soli Jibia stated that the motion seeks to cure the financial mismanagement alleged in the running of the joint venture. The Bonga Field OML 11 Eight, which is owned by the NPC but contracted to Snepco, 55%, Exxon Mobil, 20%, Egypt Exploration, 12.5%, and Total, 12.5%, uh, under the production sharing contract PSC, now seems to be far from being a PSC arrangement as it runs foul to the relevant financial operational Lose. Why will equipment for the production of oil will not be owned? It will be rented. I'll give a specific example. Some of the IOCs will rent all the cars, all the platforms for the production. Because if it is capital, it means they will own it. But if they rent it, it will, will share the thing. And who are they renting from? From a sister company. How can that a corporate body enter an oil field without prior appro approval of government. And in doing so, you cannot account for the revenue. The House, in adopting the motion, resolved to set up an ad hoc committee to investigate all joint venture operations and production sharing contracts in the oil and gas sector since 1990, with a view to ascertaining whether or not the capital expenditure, operations, Financial and related frameworks are within the ambit of the law and report back to the House within eight weeks for further legislative action. Moving on to bills, several establishment bills were presented for first reading, amongst which are Federal College of Science and Health Technology, Oju, Benue State, 2022, sponsored by Representative Samson Oku, National Commission for Almagiri Education and Out of School Children, 2022. Sponsored by Representative Shehu Balarebi. Federal Polytechnic Okoloma AFAM 2022. Sponsored by Representative Chisholm DK. Veterinary University Vaughan Plateau State 2022. Sponsored by Representative Da Chung Pagos. And Chartered Institute of Econometricians and Data Analysts 2022. Sponsored by Representative Samuel Onuigbo. I rise to move that the bill to amend the Quite a number of bills also scale second reading, among which is a bill for an act to amend the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board Act and for related matters sponsored by Representative Tolulokwe Akonde. In the leading debate, the lawmaker stated that there is need to increase the time of validity of jam results from just one year to at least two years.
we are all aware that as it stands in Nigeria today, when a child takes the JAM exam and he doesn't get into university that year, not because he did anything wrong, he has gotten fantastic grades, but because of all these implications of catchment area and quotas, he doesn't get in. He has to repeat that same exam next year. It is totally unfair. We are sacrificing the future of our children on financial justification. Because usually the, the justification that JAM comes up with is that it's, um, it's revenue generation for them. Now, that is aside. When you look at the number of students that apply for university every year and the number that gets in, it is definitely not their fault. So why should they be penalized? Everywhere in the world, there is no such exam that is valid for one year. Her amendment should be very purposeful and directful and defined. So we know exactly what she intends to amend in that uh, uh, Bill C6 amendment. Because that jump uh, law seeks to regulate and modify mode of entry into the universities. We must know that there is a difference between entry examination and terminal examination. JAMP is, a term, is an entry examination. You sit for JAMP with the purposes of gaining admission into a university, into a polytechnic, into a college of education with a view to earning a terminal qualification. The Deputy Speaker, Representative Ahmed Idris Wasi, called for calm as the intention of the bill is up. For one reason or the other, they are not able to gain admission, even though having satisfied the minimum requirement. And it's because of that, that for those unforeseen reasons, that those who have now obtained the minimum uh, entry be now allowed to be used in the next examination. One, Excuse me, there is loss of revenue. Our poor parents that suffer to pay for these children should also be looked into. The Those bill was voted on, say, approved, and referred to the House Committee on Basic Education and Services for further work. The program is still house tickets. And in the first part of the program, we took a summary of plenary proceedings for the week under review. We will move on to the committee rooms now, and we will start off with reports from the other Committee on Petroleum Product Subsidy Regime from 2017 to 2021 that held an investigative hearing on Wednesday, 20 July 2022, amongst other reports. Keep watching. We had to do away with the issue of... If there are challenges... You can always come to the national. We must back that effort. By if there was only two percent left, why didn't the ministry inject some money for twenty? Why it's fighting for the same area that there were plenty there? Are you able to expect to come and clap? clap for the Deputy Speaker of the House, Representative Ahmed Idris Wasi, has decried the absence of critical stakeholders in the ongoing investigative hearing by the Special Ad Hoc Committee on Petroleum Product Subsidy Regime from 2017 to 2021. On behalf of the Speaker, House of Representatives, Honorable Femi Bajai Mila, the lawmaker, while declaring the investigative hearing open at the National Assembly on Wednesday, observed that most of the critical stakeholders in the oil and gas industry were not present. The Deputy Speaker, who represented the Speaker, Right Honorable Femi Bajai Mila, said he was disappointed by the absence of those in authority who were expected to come and give accounts to Nigerians. Having known the quantum of money that has been expended so far, between 2017 and, 20, uh, 70, uh, 2017 and 2022, so far, uh, 2021, 4.9 trillion is assumed to have been expended under this regime for the purpose of a uh, petroleum subsidy. And if you are to Get the quantum of the, uh, the estimation to date. What is assumed to be been expended is six, six trillion naira. So the money expended, assumed, is quite very much, is humongous. And I want to believe that in the spirit of accountability, without any uh, uh, attempt to malign anybody, from our duty as legislators, we are expected to do oversight, and this is part of the oversight to ensure, ensure investigation when the need arises, which motion has already been given, and adequate notices have been uh, publicized. 
I will say that I am displeased by the even attendance of those who are within the field. That is the beginning, I thought, of what you should have hammered on. The deputy speaker charged the special ad hoc committee to ensure that nobody is spared or made to feel that he or she is above the law. He further assured the committee that the House is ready to give them the necessary support and cooperation to ensure that the right thing is done for the interests of the country and for the benefits of Nigerians. Representative Benjamin Kalu, who is the spokesman of the House of Representatives, also commented on the failure of those summoned to show up. You have sent a strong message to Nigerians that this is not a child's play, that all those who have been invited, they must come and answer to the call of transparency and accountability that we included in our legislative agenda when we came on board. So you quickly, just like go to straight to the point. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Navy on Thursday, 21st July 2022, said that a total of 12.3 million metric tons of premium motor spirit PMS were imported into the country from January to July 2022. The Nigerian Navy made this known at the resumed investigative hearing of the ad hoc committee on the volume of fuel consumed daily in the country, which met with the Nigerian Customs Service and Nigerian Navy in Abuja. The Chief of Naval Staff, Awal Gambo, was represented at the hearing by Admiral Olushala Oluagbire. According to him, the amount of the PMS that is imported from all sources, NNPC, PPMC, OMTC into Nigeria amounts to 202.9 million metric tons. The committee had questions on this presentation. We need vessels allocation letters received from NMPC showing vessel approved for loading from 15, 2015 to date. Number two, we need records of PMS seized from 2015 to date with locations and particulars of the vessels. So from um, 2017 to 2022, July, we have arrested 174 vessels. Regarding the record of auction PMS amount, quantity particulars of auctioneers, proof of payment to National Treasury, the Nigerian Navy has no such information, Mr. Chairman. But when you confiscate, who do you hand over to? Uh, the EFCC. EFCC? Yes. Or the EFCC, basically. Or the civil defense, depending on the, on the, on the offense. I'm asking for an extension of one week. Earlier? The Nigerian Customs Service had asked for more time to collate necessary information needed of them by the committee for submission. And the report. Before we go, we have a message from Da Chung Yang from Joss, who sent in an SMS via GSM number 080-3621-0052. His message reads, I just want to ask about the number of members of the House of Representatives that form the quorum for a sitting. I have been watching on TV and most of the time, most of the seats are not occupied. The, the quorum uh, uh, at any sitting of the House or its committee uh, or a joint, house, joint House and Senate sitting uh, is one third. If at any time it is observed, by a member that a quorum has not been formed, uh, uh, the attention of the speaker would be drawn by such a member, by any member to that effect, and uh, uh, a head count will be conducted immediately to ascertain uh, the number of uh, members in attendance. However, uh, most of the time, uh, uh, you will see that there are fewer members. It's not because members uh, have not attended. Uh, most of the time they came, they signed, and then they went to attend to committee meetings. Thank you for being a part of the program as always. We encourage you to continue sending in your questions and comments through our feedback channels showing on your screen. Keep watching House Ticket and see you next time.